I have one of these that I'm going to use for connecting track power to the lift out section. And the panel part of this plug and panel, I'm going to mount right here. I'm going to drill a hole here and mount this panel piece right here. I'm going to cut this cable in half right here. And then I'll add extensions onto each of the leads. Got these leads soldered. I have about a five foot extension on these leads. And this extension will wire into the industrial track bus. Now I'll get some heat shrink over those solder joints and get ready to install this. All right, time to install this panel plug. You can see where I have the heat shrink. I think I'll rotate this so the cap's up top and out of the way. All right, that's pretty sturdy. I got that plywood backing behind here. There's a one by three going across here. So that's nice and sturdy. So if I'm pushing the plug into it, here's the plug. And it's indexed, it can only be used a certain way. So pushing the plug into it, and you know how this hooked up A rail, B rail. The panel connector for the lift out section is now soldered into the industrial track bus. Now I'll use some of that liquid tape to cover up the solder connection. Getting ready to start working on the lift out section. I'm going to be using these blue point switch machines. I'm going to use those to throw the turnouts on the double crossover. Now one thing I like about these is they have the switch here that allow me to change the potential on the frog. One thing I'll have to do with these is I'll have to have some sort of control rod to switch them. I haven't quite figured out what I want to do yet for that. I originally considered tortoise machines, but the problem with tortoise machines is I need a lot of wire. And I wanted to have the connection to the DCC bus as simple as possible. So I just want to use a two pin SAE connector just to plug into this panel to power up the lift out section. So this is what I'm going with. These blue point switch machines come with a 32 thousandths music wire for activating the switch throws. That is not going to cut it on this Walters double crossover. You have to flex the steel to move them. And this just doesn't have enough power to overcome the tension of the points. So as kind of a knee jerk, I installed these switch throws. <laughs> now they, they do the job, but it doesn't do anything for the frogs. I replaced the wire on the blue point switch machines with 60 thousandths wire and you can see the obvious difference in the diameter and I have all four blue point switch machines changed over to 60 thousandths wire. So now I'll get these mounted. Now I don't know what these are called, what the technical name is for them. I'll just call them a, a reaction arm. I had to drill the hole out to 760 force. Otherwise, as you see with this switch, the switch doesn't go full throw. 
so I need to open up that hole. Now that's a 63 thousandths hole right there. It's too small. So this larger hole will allow the switch to go to its full travel. Now your situation will may be different than mine. All depends on the thickness from the blue point switch to your turnout throw. But for my situation here, this 764 hole works just about right. I have the 60 thousandths wire in the blue point switch machines, and you can see I have it in the turnout throws. I think it's going to work okay. Reaching underneath. Now it has to overcome the spring and the turnout because I didn't remove it. At least on three. I did remove it on one. But it works fine. So... I'm good with that. I've used the 60 thousandths music wire to actuate the blue point switches. Now I'm going to want to do something here for a knob, but I want something very small and unobtrusive, so I don't know exactly what that is yet. But for now, I have a way to throw the switches. Now with that done, just got to get the frogs wired up. So I got power to the frogs. Now I have the lift out section wired, the frogs powered. So ready to set it back in the layout and give it a try. After wiring up the lift out section, I hooked it up to my DCC system here and when I'd run a locomotive onto the lift out section it would trip my DCC system and what I found out and it took me a couple hours to figure this out these two rails were shorted together and I couldn't tell if it was both sides or one side. So what did I end up doing is I had to go in and cut those rails apart right here. And I did the same thing on this side. Because the rails were shorted together and it was shorting out the double crossover. But after cutting those rails apart, it works great now. All right, do an electrical check on the double crossover. I'm gonna set my meter to beep when I have a short. And right now I have the double crossover configured for the normal route, which is passing straight through. This is the B rail, this is the A rail. So A rail, B rail, A rail, B rail. So right now, the frogs are on the B rail. Frogs are on the B rail. Now if I switch, Blue point switch machine, the frog is now on the A rail. This one is not because I haven't thrown the switch. Throw the switch and it is now on the A rail. Frog is on the A rail, passes straight through 
Frog is on the A rail. Frog is on the A rail. Throw the switch. The frog is now on the B rail. Not on this one because I haven't thrown the switch. Throw the switch. Frog is on the B rail. I'm going to have to do something here with these wires. Put some kind of knob on there, but I want a, a real small knob. I don't want something that's obvious. But right now, it'd be pretty easy to poke myself on those. All right, so electrically, I'm good. So I'm testing the lift out section with my Wolthers Proto GP20. Now, the GP20's wheel base are where the wheel sets would sit directly on the frogs. So before I had the frogs wired, it would hesitate going across the lift out section because it, it would land on those dead frogs. But now, So I got the frogs powered, and all my locomotives now should be able to handle this without a problem. All right, so now let's throw the switches. Get it up a little bit further. All right, so I'm going to switch it over here. And I'm going to switch this one. Okay, now I've thrown the switches, and this frog is now on the A rail. This frog is now on the B rail. All right, works perfectly. So I'm going to set this normal route, normal route. Send the direction. So now we're on the main line track for the lift out section. All right, throw the turnouts. Now we're going to put it back on the, the town section of the track. And you can see where the GP20, here I'll put that back. You can see where the trucks straddle the frogs. But the frogs are powered, so it's not an issue now. So let's put it back to the normal route. And the double crossover working great but it wasn't without a little bit of rework I had some problems with it but now got it under control it's working good so with the lift out section connected to the industrial section local bus with just a two-wire cable 
tracks powered and the frogs are powered. So I think that'll do it for this one. Thank you for watching. Hope you join me next time.